So Accenture has sort of a point of view that covers five key areas, and you know, I think for, for your readers, some of them are very applicable, and others will need to be adapted according to the sort of marketplace and size of the company they are. The first one is working practices, and I think this is very applicable to any organisation out in the industry today. It's really how can I conduct my day-to-day -day business with a more mindset of being sustainably focused, um, look at the way that I conduct my own, what I call personal carbon footprint. So that means actually, you know, if you're a salesman, why would you necessarily need to go into the office, you know, pick up your uh, daily um, client list, then go around and come back and place the orders. You know, with mobility, with the ability to have specific applications that you can work from home or work from anywhere. You know, more and more organizations are starting to use Starbucks as their sort of regular office meeting or those types of locations. How can technology start to drive behavior in the, in the business place to actually turn uh, organizations more green? And then obviously the second part of working practice is how can the IT organization actually contribute there as well? Um, you know, if you think about the way that we often look at writing and developing our applications, you know, we may have several environments of development, pre-production, test, etc. Now, how can we more intelligently condense those environments and use them on an as and when required basis so we actually start to reduce the physical infrastructure, the need for sort of data center space, etc. And then just how IT organizations themselves operate. Um, how can they look at much more intelligent use of virtual workplaces so people can actually create this sort of virtual command center and manage the IT from a central capability but without actually having to travel that significant to, to, to undertake that activity. At the moment it seems the focus is travel in terms of uh, carbon footprint or is it a lot more than that? Well I think there's two things. I think for, if you look at sort of the working practices so enabling businesses to become more green then I would uh, say you're correct. You know, Clearly what we want to try and do here is use technology for people to think smarter in the way that they conduct their day-to-day -day business. So can they uh, reduce the amount of travel time? Can they reduce the amount of transportation that they need in order to conduct their, their, um, their business? You know, the use of um, video conferencing and enhanced video conferencing to try and uh, reduce the amount of physical meetings you have to have. Um, the ability to increase the use of unified communication, collaboration, all that just trying to reduce the need for you to be perpetually going between places to try and undertake your day-to-day -day business, which you then can translate, as you say, into you know, a, a measure of carbon footprint, be it sort of CO2 related or whatever. Working practice is one component of our point of view. The second one is the office environment. It's another area that everybody can contribute. It's just looking around the office. Uh, I use the example that uh, there was a television program back in my uh, home country of the UK uh, news program and they were showing a particular uh, office block uh, that was a, you know, a light at sort of 10 o'clock in the evening yeah. nobody was in there the PCs were on, assume the printers were on, the lights were certainly on um, and yet there was nobody actually using that facility mm -hmm. so I think for everybody you can take a look at your own home environment and make sure that you're being intelligent in the way that you're consuming sort of electrical power and the sort of physical consumption of material. So really we, we look at a number of things within the office environment, sort of intelligent use of, of power savers on the PCs, uh, paperless office on the printing. You know, if you are going to print, print it intelligently, double-sided, you know, uh, as many sort of sheets per, oh, I mean, pages per sheet as you can uh, afford to take. Probably for more of the larger enterprises, the thought of what we call thin client architecture, so actually moving that desktop away from the office and putting into the data center so that we can be uh, much more conscious of how to design that, that office. And so one of the key questions I often get asked, well, what does it take to become green? There is a, an, a what I call traditional uh, ROI to become green. So therefore we have sort of the working practices, the office, uh, we turn to data centers. I think that's the traditional area where a lot of people think green IT stems from. For very, very large organizations, the use of virtualization techniques um, orchestration and provisioning capabilities, so really starting to, to match up uh, their needs of IT with the application. One thing I guess your readers may uh, want to explore is the emerging technologies around software as a service, cloud computing. So instead of actually having 
an element of IT in-house, it's provided through a, a third party who then has the social responsibility of, of managing that environment the best they can and therefore you're buying their credential in effect but also more importantly you're buying the IT that you need when you need it and not having to house consumption or, or uh, capacity that you may not be uh, required. How is your message being uh, accepted in the marketplace? And part two of that question is uh, which industries or which companies are more accepting of, of your message at the moment? Because this, as I said, is a really young um, and emerging segment of the market. Yes, yeah, it's a very valid question. And it's interesting you say it's a, a young and emerging well, part well, of the market. I'm, I'm quoting Forrest. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, uh, I think being socially aware of the environment has been around for, for a number of years. Um, I believe that green IT is certainly on what I would call the, the awareness curve. Um, if you to ask me which industries are you know, leading the way or being very focused on this, uh, you know, resources, so sort of the petrochemical organisations are extremely focused on the green agenda. A lot of retail organisations are equally uh, focused on green, although they're looking much more supply chain than maybe some other areas and of course IT can help that. Other industries I think are, are building awareness, uh, you know, are trying to understand what it means to be green and how green can actually uh, contribute to the, the broader what we call uh, shareholder value or corporate citizenship perspective um, as well as a, a good financial ROI as well. The interesting thing is that Forrester says that service providers like Accenture will be the winners in this field because you bring in a holistic perspective to clients. But what exactly do you think they mean by holistic? So far we've, talk, we've spoken about three elements of our point of view. The other two are basically procurement um, and uh, corporate and citizenship. So procurement is all about how you take a look at that raw material being manufactured into equipment, how that equipment is shipped to your site, how it's used, and then how you socially responsibly uh, dispose of it and it gets recycled. So if you think about the, the holistic approach, it's much more than just focusing on the data center and how the evolution of hardware can help you become green. It's much more wider than that, starting from how technology can be used uh, by businesses to become more green, how IT can change the way they work in order to become more uh, green, how then you can use the office and the data center technologies uh, and evolve them to be much more uh, energy efficient and reduce some of the, the, the raw consumption materials, and then sort of looking at the whole life cycle of those events from a procurement perspective to make sure you keep everything in balance. Having that holistic view, uh, I would suggest to you then you have the right approach for a good shareholder value discussion because what you're looking at is across the whole spectrum and just not one perspective or other. There is a, a common feeling that we are starting to do things from a green initiative perspective but very few organisations are looking at it uh, holistically. You know, how many organisations actually measure what they're doing from a green initiative mm. perspective. If you cannot measure, how can you track the benefits that you're achieving from an established green agenda? So one of the key things that uh, we're seeing, more and more organizations are doing, they are understanding that a lot of the initiatives they are doing today could be also classed as green initiatives, which is very, very commendable. So many organizations are now looking at a business case that includes those traditional financial aspects but also putting a, a KPI of green attached to it as well. Right. So it covers sort of multiple stakeholders. Now I believe that you've released some tools which sound really interesting and, and a green calculator, is that correct? Yes indeed, we've, we've basically released three tools. Uh, the first one is what we call the green maturity model. Its, its intention is to start the dialogue flowing within an organisation that says this is probably what we need to look at if we're going to develop and drive a, a holistic green agenda. Along with that, we've also developed, uh, as you rightly said, the green estimators for data center and workplace. They are much more a uh, deep dive, looking into the data center and looking into the office environment, and look at sort of the true green measurement of if you were to execute X, what that actually means in terms of green credentials.